For this practical, you need a bit of filter paper with a start line or an origin line that has been drawn in pencil. If you draw it in pen, then the pen will run and it will ruin the experiments. I've got five, five known samples, A, B, C and D, and then I've got my unknown sample, which is what we're going to be testing. I've attached this to the pencil, you may have attached this to a splint, and then I'm going to put it in my beaker, and it is important to note that if I adjust this slightly, the filter paper isn't touching the sides anywhere. If this happens, if it touches the sides, then the solvent, the liquid, the water in the bottom will run up the sides and ruin the experiments. And it is just resting there. When I put water in, it is going to be below the level of the start line. Now I can put my dots on. I've tried to keep my dots as small as possible. In classroom, you might be doing this with um, food colouring and a capillary tube. Just because I don't have those things, I'm using filter paper here. And then just here, I've got my unknown sample, which is a mixture of two things. I can put that in there, and I'm just going to add some solvent so that it is just at the bottom of the paper. We can now watch the colours run up and when it's finished try and work out what the unknown sample is made of. When the solvent front gets nearly to the top we can stop the experiment and look at the results. I'm going to stop it by moving the chromatography paper out of the liquid and leaving it in there to dry. You can leave it um, for some time to dry or you can use a hairdryer to help it. Here we have a close-up image of the chromatography we just ran. We can see our four different colour samples look very different to each other. And then we can see our mixed sample looks like it is a combination of two things. We have a spot here, which appears to be the same as this here. And then there is another section here, which appears to be the same as this. So as well as matching up the spots to see what it looks like, we can also work out something called the RF value. And this is the distance moved by the spot divided by the distance moved by the solute. Now here it says distance moved by solute, just to make that a bit easier, it is going to be the spot over the solvent. The solute is the bit that's dissolved in the solvent, that's the, the spot that you started with. However, our real life chromatography experiment is a bit messy and in an exam they're much more likely to give you something a bit neater. Something that looks a bit more like this, where the spots are much smaller and they're much more well defined. Just to make things a bit clearer here, I've colour coded them. So A is green, B is purple, C is purple and D is pink. In the exam, they're probably just going to be all black. Now U is a mixture of two different things. The first thing you need to do is work out what it is a mixture of. So we have this spot here, which lines up with this spot over here. This little spot lines up with this one. This little spot lines up here. This little spot, there are two possibilities of what it could align up with. Now we can see that all of the spots that are in A are also in U, and all of the spots that are in B are also in U, but not all of the spots that are in C are also in U. So we can say that U is a mixture of A and B because all of the spots that are in A and all the spots that are in B are also in U. Now we can work out the RF value of some of these spots. Now we need to move the, measure the distance moved by the spots, that is going to be 
from where the spot started and I'm going to measure the distance of um, this spot here and we're going to measure from the middle of the spot so about there that's really important it's from the middle of the spot not the top not the bottom not the range the middle of the spot so this spot I'm just going to take it out to the side has moved 2.7 centimeters Now I can measure the distance moved by the solvent front. And that has moved 9.1 centimetres. So we can say the distance moved by spot is 2.7 divided by 9.1. That is going to give us an RF value of 0 0.3. We can use the RF values to compare different chromatography. So if your solvent front ran for longer and ended up up here, the spots would be higher up, but they should give exactly the same RF number. It's kind of like an identity number. We can then further take some of these spots and do extra analysis on them to clarify and work out exactly what they are. The solvent that I used, and I'm sure most of you used, was water. Water isn't very volatile, so it doesn't evaporate much. But if you're using a more volatile solvent, like um, ethanol, you might want to put a lid on the um, beaker so that it doesn't all evaporate. So the things that we need to know for every single practical are dependent variable. It wasn't really an independent variable. It wasn't really an independent variable, but you could say we changed the spots and we measured how far they moved. The controls, the fair test, it was the same amount of time they were running for. It was the same solvent they were running in. Risk assessment, we had glass, we had water, um, we had splints or pens, so they could all potentially hurt you by being poked, you could slip on the water, you could break the glass. Sources of error could be measuring from the wrong distance in the spot. Alternatives could be things like gas chromatography, thin layer chromatography, or even using analytical techniques such as mass spectrometry to identify what is in a sample. Um, the equations, which uh, we covered that one for the RF, no units for this, just the distance, so centimetres. Um, maybe you have, might have to convert from millimetres into centimetres. Unlikely that you're going to be using metres, but those are the only units. Calculations was a division. The method, method we went over, um, they could ask you to draw a bar graph for this. Um, they might ask you to do that. And then we have the diagram of the equipment.